A missile flies through the air at over five times the speed of sound. It swerves to avoid countermeasures that try to stop it. The target is within sight. The hypersonic missile adjusts its course one last time before altering its angle of descent and racing toward a high-priority military target. This is the fastest missile in the world, and nothing can stop it. Unfortunately for the United States military, hypersonic missile technology is one of the only things they haven't managed to master yet. Even worse news for the United States is that the two countries that are ahead of them in hypersonic missile development are Russia and China. As of right now, it seems unlikely that these countries would go to war with one another, but that could all change in an instant. Russia is constantly pushing its luck when it comes to invading neighbors and influencing foreign affairs around the world. China is becoming a superpower whose economy will likely outgrow the United States in the coming years, making them one of the dominant forces in the world. All of these things have raised tensions over the last decade that will not cool anytime soon. The United States, Russia, and China all want to have power and the ability to spread their influence across the globe. Hypersonic missiles are one type of technology many military strategists believe will allow them to do this. What are these futuristic weapons? Why are they important? And how has the United States fallen so far behind in the development of hypersonic missiles? Let's find out. There is a technical difference between supersonic and hypersonic weapons. Supersonic means that something travels faster than Mach 1 or the speed of sound. Hypersonic, on the other hand, means that an object is traveling faster than Mach 5 or five times the speed of sound. There are plenty of problems that aircraft and missiles encounter when traveling above the speed of sound, but as an object approaches hypersonic speeds, all sorts of inconvenient phenomena begin to occur. Mach 5 is about 3,836 miles per hour. This is incredibly fast for any man-made object. In fact, at these speeds, there are some huge obstacles that the missile object needs to overcome to prevent it from being ripped apart by friction and heat. Almost every spacecraft that's ever re-entered the atmosphere and landed safely traveled at hypersonic speeds. When NASA space shuttles were still in use, they would exceed Mach 25, or around 17,500 miles per hour, during re-entry. Therefore, hypersonic crafts aren't new. It's the true hypersonic missiles and their maneuvering capabilities that the United States is struggling with right now. The goal for a hypersonic missile is not only to travel faster than Mach 5 without being torn apart, but also to be able to maneuver aerodynamically at these speeds. Hypersonic missiles must be able to dodge defenses and change course at a moment's notice. There are a few problems with overcoming the challenges associated with maneuverability at hypersonic speeds, all of which have seemed to plague the U.S. Department of Defense research teams for decades. One of the most challenging aspects of creating viable hypersonic missiles is that they need to be able to withstand a huge amount of heat while traveling and turning through the air. When making adjustments at Mach 5 and above, the missile's casing can be heated to over 2,000 degrees Celsius or 3,632 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, this can be a problem when carrying a powerful explosive. The missile must be able to shed the heat while maintaining its shape and structure. It also must be able to keep the combustible materials inside cool so that it doesn't explode when adjusting course. Maneuvering at hypersonic speeds doesn't just generate massive amounts of heat around the hull of the missile, it also causes turbulence. As a hypersonic missile exceeds Mach 5, it experiences a buildup of air pressure in front of it. When the missile passes through the air, the built-up pressure at the front of the missile collapses into the space behind it, and it creates a sonic boom. The compression of air and the buildup of pressure causes a massive amount of turbulence. The aerodynamic shape of the missile helps the air flow around it, but there is no getting around the jostling that comes with hypersonic flight. This means that the missile needs to be able to withstand a beating before reaching its target. All of the shaking can cause components to come loose and systems to malfunction. This is a huge problem when everything about a hypersonic missile needs to be incredibly precise. But there are even bigger issues that need to be addressed before a hypersonic missile can fly. In order for the engines aboard a hypersonic missile to work, there needs to be a way to ignite the fuel within the booster while it's traveling at hypersonic speeds. Aircraft that travel faster than sound but below Mach 5 use an engine called a ramjet that uses the compressed air at the front of the vessel to feed oxygen into its engine. However, once a missile or aircraft reaches hypersonic speeds, the air traveling through the engine moves so fast that the entire combustion process is thrown off. On larger craft such as the space shuttle, there are self-contained systems that generate power and thrust, allowing the engines to continue functioning even at hypersonic speeds. Unfortunately, hypersonic missiles are too small to contain their own power sources and therefore need to use what's called a scramjet engine to maintain speed and power. This is where the problems start to come in. Scramjet engines are still being developed in the United States, 
There are some that have already been tested successfully but never aboard a missile. The scramjet engines work similarly to the ramjets, except the air flowing through them needs to be slowed down so that the ignition timing is in sync with the airflow. If there's too much fuel or too little oxygen during the combustion process, the engine could stall and the missile would fall from the sky. The problem is further exacerbated when the missile needs to turn or adjust course. Every movement will change the rate of airflow going into the engine, which will then need to be taken into account in order to keep the combustion happening at the right intervals. Yet, even though these challenges make hypersonic missile technology incredibly difficult to achieve, it has been done. Both China and Russia have operational hypersonic missiles. Now, it's important to keep in mind that operational doesn't necessarily mean they're mass-producing these weapons or that they can even get them to work all the time. It means that they've successfully tested hypersonic missiles and are able to replicate the process. However, most military experts outside of these countries are suspicious of how accurate the hypersonic missiles developed in China and Russia actually are. Creating a missile that can fly at hypersonic speeds is one thing, but using a missile to hit a precise target is totally a different story. Therefore, the hypersonic missiles currently developed probably are not the most effective. But the fact remains that China and Russia are still further along in the hypersonic missile race than the United States. If nothing else, the flight of hypersonic missiles by China and Russia has forced the US and its allies to invest more time, money, and manpower into creating operational hypersonic missiles in order to move to the next phase of warfare. There are currently two different types of hypersonic missile delivery systems being used. The first is the hypersonic glide vehicle, which consists of a large ballistic missile that contains a hypersonic missile inside of it. Once the ballistic missile reaches upper atmosphere, it releases the glide vehicle. As the glide vehicle plummets toward the surface of the Earth, it engages its engines and accelerates to hypersonic speeds. The hypersonic glide vehicles use a mixture of the planet's gravity and its engines to reach speeds over Mach 5 as they close in on the target. The problem is that in order to get these missiles to the right altitude for deployment, they have to first be carried into the sky by a much larger rocket that's traveling at slower speeds. This makes the delivery rocket with the hypersonic missile inside of it more vulnerable to being shot down during the launch process. The second type of hypersonic missile that's been developed is the hypersonic cruise missile. These are what every military around the world is working on perfecting. Hypersonic cruise missiles employ scramjet technology that allows them to travel at hypersonic speeds all on their own. They can be launched from an aircraft already moving at supersonic speeds and then accelerate beyond Mach 5 as they travel to their target. Once fired from the delivery vehicle, the hypersonic cruise missile will use state-of-the-art navigation systems to avoid enemy defenses and destroy its target. So, the question is, what type of hypersonic missiles do the Chinese and Russians have, and how far behind them is the US? On December 26, 2018, Russia launched its newest ballistic missile, the RS-28 Sarmat, from a base in the Ural Mountains. On board the ballistic missile was a hypersonic glide vehicle called an Avangard. The ballistic missile carried Avangard into the stratosphere and deployed it. The Avangard accelerated back toward the Earth and carried out a number of zigzagging patterns for over 3,700 miles above Siberia at Mach 27. It then crashed in the Kamchatka Peninsula. This was all information that the Russian military provided, so it needs to be taken with a grain of salt. Upon completion of the test, Russian President Vladimir Putin reportedly called Avangard the perfect New Year's gift for the country. Even scarier than Putin's remarks is the fact that after the test, the Russian Defense Ministry informed the world that they now had put a nuclear warhead on the Avangard and that they were the first country to be armed with not only hypersonic weapons, but hypersonic nukes. Russia also has a second hypersonic missile called the Kinzhal. This is closer in design to a hypersonic cruise missile, although it is slightly different. It does not use a scramjet engine to maintain its speed, but instead uses a conventional rocket engine that's designed to withstand enormous pressures and turbulence. The Kinzhal is claimed to be able to reach Mach 12 using this brute force technique, but this has not been confirmed. What we do know about this missile is that it seems to be a modified 9K720 Iskander. The 9K720 Iskander is hardly a short-range ballistic missile. The Russians have claimed to put a sophisticated guidance system on board that allows the Kinzhal to still hit its target even while traveling at hypersonic speeds. The main problem with the Kinzhal is that it's more like a drag racer than a sleek aerodynamic missile. It can achieve hypersonic speeds while also maintaining its hull integrity, but only when flying in a straight line. It's claimed to be able to maneuver while on its flight path, but there is no evidence to support that the Kinzhal is able to change direction drastically once it passes Mach 5. China has created a hypersonic glide missile similar to the Avangard called the DFZF, 
It's deployed from a DF-17 rocket, which is what carries the hypersonic glide vehicle into the upper atmosphere before deploying it. Once deployed, the DFCF can reach hypersonic speeds, but it's estimated that it tops out somewhere between Mach 5 and Mach 10. The DFZF was designed as an anti-naval ship weapon, which has put the United States on edge as one of the most powerful weapons in the Pacific is its aircraft carriers. Like with Russia's missiles, it's still unclear if the DFZF has an operational guidance system that makes it accurate or if it's just a very fast weapon that may or may not land somewhere close to its target. Even though both Russia and China have designed and seem to have successfully launched hypersonic missiles, it's unlikely that they found a way to make them accurate enough to hit an actual target. This brings us back to the United States and why they seem so far behind on the race to create operational hypersonic missiles. When we look at the Department of Defense's track record with hypersonic missiles, it is not good. In fact, over the past decade, there have been many more failures than successes. The frustrating part for the engineers and researchers working on these projects is that they constantly run into roadblocks and preventable catastrophes. If they were given the resources and funds they needed for the project, the United States would likely already have basic hypersonic missiles. The craziest part about many of the failed tests is that they were caused by faulty boosters and separation mechanisms. In these cases, the missiles were destroyed before reaching hypersonic speeds, so a ton of data was either lost or never collected. In fact, documents that have been released indicate that out of the 16 hypersonic missile tests carried out since 2010, a quarter of them failed as a result of the conventional rocket booster malfunctioning. Another two tests failed because of separation problems, and a final test failed due to undisclosed reasons meaning that almost 50% of the tests ended before the missile could reach hypersonic speed. That being said, the United States has had a successful test in recent years, which means the US has finally entered the hypersonic missile theater. However, it was several years later than both China and Russia. At this point, the United States is still pretty far behind both countries when it comes to hypersonic technology. We don't truly know how many failures both China and Russia had before successfully launching and flying their hypersonic missiles due to a lack of transparency from their governments and tight control of media outlets. One of the main reasons the US is so far behind these other countries is because military leaders didn't feel that there was a pressing need to develop hypersonic missile technology. By the time they figured out that Russia and China were already on the cutting edge of this technology, the US had only run a handful of tests, none of which were successful, and didn't have the infrastructure to ramp up research and production. Bureaucracy has definitely played a role in the lack of funding and seriousness around the United States' hypersonic missile projects. Without a sense of urgency around the development of these missiles, progress was slow. And now the United States is regretting its previous decisions when it comes to these weapons. In the last several years, the Air Force has been submitting investment portfolios and plans to build better test ranges to develop hypersonic missile technology. But due to budget constraints, many of these necessities have been turned down. This is incredibly frustrating for the research and development teams who know how vital these missiles will be in the future. Even more important than the test ranges themselves is the need for underground tunnels where the missiles can be safely tested. As far as we know, there's only one underground tunnel in the United States that can withstand both the speed and temperatures associated with testing hypersonic missile technology. The caveat is that this tunnel does not belong to the Air Force, instead it belongs to NASA. Unsurprisingly, NASA has its own technology and missions to focus on, so finding time to use the testing tunnel can be extremely difficult. But it's not just a lack of funding and resources that stalled hypersonic missile research for the US, it also has to do with timing. In the 1990s, it looked as if the United States would be the first country to master hypersonic technology. They were light years ahead of any other competitor and had a plethora of aircraft designs that looked promising. Not to mention the space shuttle had been in operation for over a decade. Then conflict broke out. The Gulf War followed by instability in the Middle East led the US to dedicate more time, money, and resources to existing technology that had already proven itself in combat rather than developing new tech. Vehicles like the F-14 Tomcat and the F-22 Raptor were produced in high numbers while hypersonic missile technology was put on the back burner. Now that tensions are once again beginning to flare up with Russia, and a new threat to American influence abroad is presented by a growing Chinese economy and military, the United States government has started throwing money at advanced weapons research, however it might be a little too late. In 2020, the Pentagon allocated just over $2 billion for developing hypersonic tech. Then in 2021, this number was raised to $3.2 billion. 
In the year 2022, as this video is being made, the US government is devoting $3.8 billion to the future development of hypersonic technology. To be fair, there are around 70 hypersonic programs that the government is funding, and not all have to do with hypersonic missiles, but at least seven that we know of do which would be more hypersonic missiles than the United States currently has. The United States also has another advantage when it comes to developing hypersonic technology. Unlike Russia and China, the US has an entire private sector to pull resources and technology from. Companies like SpaceX, Boeing, and Blue Origin are all working on their own hypersonic technology as they develop their space tourism vessels. The United States government can contract out these companies or piggyback on their ideas and tech. There is also another large difference between what the United States sees its hypersonic missiles becoming compared to the other two nations. It seems that hypersonic missiles both Russia and China have developed are mainly created to deliver nuclear payloads to a target. If this is true, then those missiles only need to be relatively accurate. As they strike anywhere near their target, the nuclear payload will do the rest of the work. The United States is currently focusing its efforts on creating hypersonic missiles that can be precise and deliver a non-nuclear warhead. This means what the US is trying to do with its hypersonic missile program is much more complex than the missiles that have been developed in Russia and China. If a nuke is fired, it doesn't really matter if it's delivered on a hypersonic missile or a ballistic missile, the result will be the same. Nuclear war between world powers will break out and the planet will be destroyed by nuclear winter. At that point, hypersonic technology will be a moot point. But if the United States can develop hypersonic missile technology that is accurate, while also delivering a conventional explosive, the missile would be an excellent deterrent and an unstoppable weapon in battle. At this point, all three countries have plans to expand their hypersonic missile technology. Russia is working on their 3M22 Zircon hypersonic anti-ship missile, which will need to be much more maneuverable and accurate than anything they've created thus far. China, on the other hand, is working toward completing their DF-41 program which will be a hypersonic fragmentation orbital bombardment system. The United States is still technically behind in the hypersonic missile game, but they're closing the gap fast. It's only a matter of time until the US develops a working hypersonic missile. The question is, did they give their adversaries too much of a head start? Now watch most insane weapons the US military is actually using today. Or check out Russia versus the United States military army comparison.